Good morning and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 28th of August 2020 and the time has just gone 11.47 British summer time. And I'm looking ahead to next week, which is Monday the 31st of August until Friday the 4th of September. And uh, today's markets are, are being in, in European equity markets. Uh, I've been reasonably mixed. Um, it's been a reasonably muted session. Uh, we've had a couple of big stories in the past 24 hours. Uh, yesterday, we, heard, we, we had the Jackson Hole Symposium kick off in the US. Jerome Powell, the head of the Fed, um, came out and, stayed, came out and stated uh, that the US Central Bank is going to be altering its um, its inflation policy. So it's, it's now going to be aiming for having an average inflation target of 2%. So therefore, they're going to allow inflation to run beyond 2% uh, for some time. They're deliberately vague with that remark because obviously they, they want to keep uh, a very loose monetary policy in place to help cushion the blow of the COVID-19 crisis. So they don't want to be constrained by, oh no, inflation's risen. We have to actually look at the tightened policy, which could hamper the recovery. They did state though that if there's, any kind of, if there's a very big rise up in inflation, they would look at altering their policy. But it's very clear the Federal Reserve are content for inflation to run beyond 2% for some time, even though it hasn't actually got that at 2% level as of yet. Uh, we had a mixed session in Europe yesterday, um, well, in the world. Europe closed lower, the US stocks largely closed higher. Today, it's a bit of a mixed bag in Europe. Um, in the last number of hours, uh, we've heard some pretty significant news out of Japan. Uh, Shinzo Abe, the Japanese Prime Minister, uh, is going to be is going to resign uh, for health issues. Uh, this had a quite a big impact on both the Japanese yen and the Nikkei 225. Uh, Mr. Abe is associated with extremely loose uh, fiscal and monetary policy of the Abe, Abe economics, as is referred to uh, a very uh, kind of uh, aggressive policy of essentially spending to drive up to drive down the value of the Japanese yen and in turn try and stimulate the economy um, himself and Mr. Kuroda of the of the, the Bank of, of Japan is kind of his partner in crime as you were uh, they're they're kind of together they're kind of associated with a very um, very much throwing money at the problem so when that was announced that Mr. Abe, the Prime Minister, will be resigning, we saw a sharp move to the upside in the Japanese yen, and, and conversely, uh, we saw a sharp move to the downside in the, in the Nikkei 225. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll run through some of the major indices, see how they're faring, I'll look at the major currency pairs, and then also uh, talk about the big events of next week. And the biggest event of next week, uh, head and shoulders, is the US non-farm payrolls report. In fact, uh, I'm going to be hosting a webinar on it next week. Um, you can find it on our website under cmcmarkets.com under insights, webinars and events. You can sign up for it here on Friday the 4th of September, kicking off at 13.15 British summer time. Uh, so what I'll quickly do is I take a look at what's going on on the, uh, on, on the FTSE 100 to start off with. We can see here on the wider trend for um, basically since the, since since late March, it's been it's been to, to the upside. But if you look at the price action between June until now, we've seen a, a few lower lows and lower highs. So it kind of the bias kind of remains to the downside. And essentially, while we hold below this blue line here, the 50-day moving average in at 3,138, it's likely we could see further um, further moves to the downside. We're currently trading basically in around the kind of 6,000 mark. So if we do have a fairly significant move below this level, we could be like heading back down toward this zone here, the, lay, the, the lows for late July in around 5,852. Should we retake the 50 day moving average um, at 6,138, we could be looking at retesting the mid-August highs. If we go beyond that, we could be heading up towards this zone here in around 3,000, sorry, 6,340. 3,642, there, thereabouts. Um, let's take a look at what's going on over in Germany. The wider trend to the upside, the wider trend for the last few months is still very much to the upside. Even though the, the highs of August have yet, have, haven't actually taken out the highs of July, it's still very much in an upward trend. The lows have been higher. We're kind of comfortably above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at 12,740. And while we, we remain above that metric and while we remain above 13,000, 
it's likely we could see further gains being achieved. Uh, if we take off the highs of, of, of July, it could take us back to levels last seen, kind of late-ish, uh, late February in around, say, 13,500. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs that were achieved kind of in the middle of February, just before the COVID-19 crisis really kicked off. So we can see here that the FTSE 100 has been kind of broadly kind of moving to the downside the last couple of months. The DAX is in a strong position, but hasn't really gotten, hasn't retested its most recent highs. We're coming on now to the S&P 500, 500 uh, and we can really just show you how the kind of US markets are kind of in a league of their own. The US 500, I said the US S&P 500 um, has been setting, has been kind of notching up all time highs recently. In fact, um, you know, we're, we're currently expecting the S&P 500, when cash trading gets underway, to um, to open to open around well just shy of 3,500. It's possible we could see uh, a yet another record high today. It's in a very much in the upward trend. If we do see any kind of move to the downside, support could be found from this zone here in around 3,400. And if we go below that, if support could be found from this area uh, in around 3,350. I take a look now at what's going on over in Japan on uh, the Nikkei 225. As I mentioned, there's a sharp move to the downside uh, on the back of the news that uh, Prime Minister Abe will be resigning. You know, the broad move for the last few months has been to the upside. Uh, it, it wasn't. It was only early this week uh, that that, that um, you know we, we, that the, the, the highs that were achieved this week were, have, were actually were multi-month highs. They were the highs that were seen in kind of late February as the crisis was kicking was uh, was kind of starting out. Um, we traded down below the 50-day moving average, this blue line here, but we're still comfortably back above it. So if we can remain above it, it's like a, the wider upper trend can continue. And if you take out the recent highs, we could then be heading up towards this zone here in around 23,800. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the dollar yen. As I mentioned, there's a lot of volatility uh, in the last 24 hours, both the comments from um, Mr. Powell at the Jackson Hole Symposium that the US is going to get on the route uh, of having um, average inflation target of 2% as opposed to a fixed target of 2% of so we saw a lot, a lot of volatility in the US dollar yesterday and the last few hours the news that Mr. Abe will be stepping down has put a huge upward pressure on the Japanese yen and in turn downward pressure on the uh, on the US dollar so if you take a look at the price action for the last few months it's broadly been moving to the downside we can notice on a few occasions this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average acted nicely as as, uh, as resistance. We're still very much even to, even the highs of today's session didn't even properly retest it, and then we had the aggressive move to the downside on the news of the Abe resignation. We can see here that this candle here has the potential to be a bearish engulfing, uh, whereby this red, red rectangle here, the entire body of this of this candle, is essentially engulfing all, um, all of the, the the positive move the positive body from yesterday so if we do have further losses on do, on dollar yen we could look at heading back towards the lows of mid august in at 105 spot 10 and if we go below that we could look we could then be looking heading down toward this area here in at 104 spot 18. Uh, any move to the upside could run, run, run into resistance from the 100 moving average uh, just shy of 107 and if we go beyond that, we could then be looking heading towards this red line here, the 200 moving average, which comes into play just 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 below 108. Um, Taking a look now, what's going on on the uh, the euro versus the US dollar? Broadly speaking, the dollar has been weak recently. You know, it wasn't that long ago. Uh, it was only in the in the middle of August. Uh, the the US dollar index felt um, dropped to its lowest level in 27 months. Conversely, this is when euro dollar hit its highest level. Uh, in in, uh, in, uh, in in over two years, so we're still very much in the upward trend. We look we look to be retesting. We could be retesting uh, the recent highs. We're, we're pushing higher today. If you if you move on to the and if we retake the recent highs uh, of, of mid August, we could then be heading up towards the kind of one spot twenty area. Any move to the downside in euro dollar could find some support from this area here in at one spot sixteen ninety six. Sorry, one spot sixteen ninety six. A move below that could take us back down towards one spot 16. I'll take a look now, lastly, in terms of currency pairs um, and charts, pound dollar. Pound dollar is actually, you know, even, even today's uh, upward move 
uh, we've, we've, had, we've had a new multi-month high. We've taken out one spot at 32.84. So now back at levels last seen uh, it's in, in December, um, again, mid-December, as far as uh, pound dollar is, is concerned. So it's still very much in an upward trend, part, you know, largely driven by the weakness in the dollar, um, particularly because of the, the yen is really kind of pressurizing the dollar at the moment. So if we do kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards 130, heading up towards this area here in one spot, 30, 30, uh, one spot 35, 15, the levels that we're seeing uh, and the December, I think, in a post election high of uh, the middle of December. In terms of uh, major kind of events to look out for next week, as I mentioned, US non farm payrolls is by far the biggest one. And please uh, sign up for our webinar. Um, in the most recent jobs, jobs report, 1.76 million jobs were created. Um, the consensus estimate so far, it could change, is expected for 1.55 million jobs to be created. Uh, economists are also predicting uh, a dip in un unemployment. Um, it's already, the unemployment rate has already fallen. Um, it's, it's, uh, economists so far are expecting it to fall further, they're expecting it to fall below 10%. Also, keep an eye out on average earnings, because uh, if, if average earnings falls, that could be a sign um, that more and more people are returning to the workforce, because a lot of people in uh, jobs which are typically lower paid, such as retail uh, or hospitality, a lot of those have been impacted uh, by the COVID-19 crisis. And if we, and if they're returning to work there in, in, in effect, the, 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 the pool of workers is increasing and therefore we could see a decline in the average earnings rate. So ordinarily fall than average in normal circumstances would be a bad thing for the economy because um, people who earn less tend to spend less. But in this case, it could be a sign that more people are returning to the economy. Also, for next week, keep an eye out for we have the um, we have quite a few service reports um, from from China, from the main eurozone, um, from the main eurozone countries, from the UK, from the US. Uh, we also have an interest rate decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. As every as we do every single week, we have the US jobless claims. That's going to be kind of a, give us a bit of flavour what's going on in the US jobs market. Speaking of the state of the US economy, we also have the US beige book. That's going to give us an update on how things are performing in the US jobs market. On the corporate front, uh, we're going to have full year figures from Bar Developments. Now, a common enough theme of the of the British house builders recently has been that the figures for the time period, you know, have actually been quite poor because essentially construction was ground to a halt because of the pandemic. But keep an eye out for the order book because it, it, it seems to me that work that was basically it's meant to get done in this financial year has effectively been pushed back to the next financial year. And if you know, if you look at right move, uh, transactions, transaction levels have been, have been extremely robust. So there is demand out there. So keep an eye for the actual order book uh, and the kind of comments in relation to guidance. Uh, we also have a, a other update. First half figures from Restaurant Group. Uh, they've obviously had a, quite a tough time because of the pandemic. Um, and and turning on to company other companies that have numbers out next week. Zoom communications have second quarter numbers. This is one of the kind of tech stocks that's really kind of flown uh, because of the crisis uh, in the kind of the fact that um, a, a huge amount of business meetings were now conducted uh, via Zoom calls rather than face to face. They've had um, seen a surge in activity on the back of the pandemic. Uh, and we also have updates from Brown Foreman. Um, Foreman, they're the company, the spirits company, which make you know Jack Daniels whiskey, that well-known brand. And we also have quality figures from DocuSign. Yet again, another company, another tech company that's managed to do quite well out of the pandemic. Now, thanks to you for listening. That's all from this week. Have a good trading week and good luck.